Okay, well, just quickly moving on to another one of those many jobs that has to be done. I kept meaning to put this rear bumper back on since the time it was in the body shop, which was months ago. Um, but it's awkward because it's only me and I don't want to scratch the paint. And well, you understand, I'm sure. So sometimes you have to get a little creative. Fortunately, with this ramp, I have this lovely little jack. Not that the bumper's that heavy, however, it is bloody awkward. And as I said, I don't want to scratch anything. So now I've got it to an approximate height and I'm gonna fiddle around trying to get a couple of bolts in so that the weight is supported and then I can get all the other bolts in and uh, fit it up. The, uh, there are big bolts sort of about here, oops, sorry, about here and over here, of course, in the usual place. I just got that little piece of string there just in case things slip. At least I know this end won't drop too far. Um, so yeah, uh, protected the, oh, can't see that, can you? Come on, come on, come on, respond. Camera, why aren't you responding? Why, because you're a fucking pain in the ass, camera. Sometimes this camera drives me nuts. There, just protected the exhaust with some blue tape. It, it just stops getting it scratched. Right, this is gonna be the fun bit now trying to get these bolts in. And then once that's done, I'm gonna try and give this bumper a bit of a clean up. Um, it's not that good quality, I know, but I can't afford a thousand dollars to have it re-chromed right at the moment. And I know I've mentioned it before, but sometimes you just have to uh, suck it up, buttercup. What to do? This bumper seal is a real pain in the ass. I can push it up with my fingers, get it close, but the bumper is now so far in that it's almost impossible to get the seal up. The only thing I can think I can do is put some spaces on the big ones here to pull it this way, but then again, the brackets that are here are only going to go so far. This really is a fucking nightmare. God knows how they did it on the production line. Wish there was a video of that. I'm not sure what to do at the moment. I'm really not. Do I take the seal off and pull the bumper in and then put the seal back on? That's one option. The other option I thought, but I don't think it's really gonna work, was to put tape up here and try and hold it here while I pull the bumper in and then pull the tape off, but that seems like a horrendous way to do it. As you can see, it's, you know, the bumpers, uh, if you can see that, pretty much, you know, that's level. And I haven't even got it tight at the moment, it's loose. So to make this bumper seal curve, it's going to come back on itself and then up. That ain't going to work. Oh, boy. I've made a decision. Fuck it. I'm just going to bolt this bumper up and leave it. I'm going to deal with the rubber seal at a later date. Right now, there are more important things to do, such as getting the uh, air conditioning in and sorted and getting the interior finished. This rear bumper is on, and I don't give a shit what it looks like. Um, it doesn't look terrible. It's not how it should be, but I don't care. I've had enough with this fucking bumper. All right, here's the new gator. Punched holes in the rubber, got the screws in place. We'll uh, offer that up. Now I remember why I wanted the longer gator and not this one. It's because it hits at the top there. Now I could chop this off, but that would defeat the point. So as this is rubber, I'm gonna try and stretch it. But as it doesn't quite reach, these screws weren't reaching. So now I've, uh, put longer screws in and now I'm just going to tighten that ring 
and hope it'll pull the rubber down. Let us see. Oh, there it is. However, I've created myself another problem. Guess what? Okay, that's first gear. And that's all it takes. The strain on here is so much that, that it's not staying in gear. Back is fine. Forward isn't. So first is uh, probably okay. Third is the one. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I have two choices. I'm going to leave it like in third gear. I'm going to leave it in third gear for uh, a while and apply some heat very gentle if that doesn't work and in other words it still pops out too easily then i will adapt the top of that previous gear lever shroud to be molded onto the top of this this is where the problem is it's the um where the gear lever joins the gear box I might be able to grind that down a bit, but that seems a little drastic. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll try the heat thingy first. I've got a heat gun rather than a flame, and uh, see how that goes. It's only when it's in third. First is fine. It kind of, I don't know why, but it tucks in and it's great. And uh, fifth, that's fine, again, that's fine. But in the middle, which is third, that comes out too easy. So let's apply a little heat and see how it goes. Well, the holding it there and heating it seems to have improved it. I'm not gonna say it's cured the problem yet. Uh, I'm gonna let that cool down now. I'm gonna have to take it for a test drive and get it up into third gear. Uh, that's really very awkward because the seat is not made. Maybe I should make up the driver's seat. No, I can't, I've got to get the air conditioning done first. That's all right, I can do that. All right, air conditioning will be the next major job. But prior to that, silly, silly little, um, Let's see if I can make the rear bumper chrome look any better. Well, I tried a couple of different methods on the uh, this rear bumper. It's too far gone. That's all there is to it. It's it's quite. I you know then somebody says try steel wool. Somebody else says use uh, kitchen foil. Somebody else says metal polish. Uh, somebody else says uh, 1500 uh, grit uh, wet and dry. I tried them all. It didn't make a damn bit of difference. This is still shit. I mean, the chrome is just, it's its too fucking old. Simple as that. It's too old. Sorry, my camera's not doing what it should. Oh, this fucking camera drives me nuts. Right, there it is. Now you can actually see the bumper. Um, it's, yeah, it's had it. It needs re-chroming. So, um, that's just going to have to wait. Unless you guys all want to get together and send me a thousand dollars, which I somehow doubt. Um, or, or one of you, I don't mind. <laughs> I just don't happen to have a thousand dollars spare. I've put so much money into this car. Ah, oh, Jesus. I, I spent thirty, forty thousand dollars on the body alone. Uh, the interior, ten thousand. Oh, God. I, I, uh, wheels and tyres. God knows. I can't remember what I paid for. I think it was like $250 a wheel and then $200 a tyre. Christ, there's another couple of grand there. Oh, and then don't ask me about the engine, what I spent on that. Oh, crap. Anyway, uh, the point being that uh, it really is not going to get redone until probably next year if I can save up my money somehow. I don't know, sell my ass on the streets, sell something. Uh, 
it's dis it's it's disheartening. It, it is because I know a lot of you're going. Oh, you know, the car's so lovely, which it is, uh, and the bumper lets it down, which it does. But I can't do anything about it. Sorry, guys. Yes, I could throw it on a credit card, but no, uh, I, I don't want to do that. All right. So, sorry, slightly depressing note there. Um, we'll see what happens with the gear lever. Well, gear booter, gator. Um, worst case scenario, I'll chop a lump of this off, put it on the top. Yep, I'll get there. Next is the AC, fitting the AC into the car. Which, excuse me one second while I move shit around. Oh, before I move on to, well, I'm it's still on the AC. This is the AC here, as you can tell, vintage air. Um, I was looking in the pictures, and there appears, and I, I hadn't even thought about this, I was just going to run the pipes, these big, thick-ass pipes, right the way through from the engine compartment through a hole uh, into um, the interior and continue to the unit. However, I did note that these type of units, you see they have those double nuts on. Well, what you do is you drill a hole in the firewall, shove this through without this nut, put the nut on it, tighten it all up, and then at the other end, of course, you have your... Did you see any of that? I don't know where my fucking hands were. Sorry, let me... I'm going to repeat myself here, so if you did see it, great. If you didn't, oh, well, never mind. You're about to. These particular units, you put these through the firewall. Obviously, some kind of sealant goes around it. And then you do up the nut once it's through the firewall. And then you have your connection here, which is great. So I've got that one. There must be another one. There it is. So I've got the these two high and low they'll go let's say somewhere on the firewall not or maybe even in the wheel arch I'm not sure uh, I think it's probably going to be in the wheel arch somewhere purely because that's where I've got the pipes going to and then on the other side you pick up with whichever one of these you need or this or no not that or this not sure where that one goes now. It's a low pressure side. I thought I'd got that installed. Maybe not. So much fun. Oh, and other things that you have to install somewhere in, in the circuit. Uh, that's a high pressure switch. So, oh, I can see I can just chop a, chop a, um, it's probably in this line somewhere. Oh, look, I've already made an end off. I wonder why I did that. I did it for a reason. Oh, and by the way, I, I've got my own crimping tool. Um, and once I've done this job, then I'm going to sell it. So, yeah, lots more fun with AC. Christ. Did I just say it? Get out in that garage. Go do some shit. Look at all the shit i got to do. This fucking spaghetti junction i got to deal with. Lucky I can read. Okay, again, get out in my garage. Go do some shit.